Hey guys, welcome back to FIFA 23 Brighton Korea Mode. And there's one thing that I want to talk about uh, in today's episode. Again, it's not quite related to the uh, to the episode itself in general, but more of a footballing news all around the globe. And before going into that thing that I want to talk about, uh, let's kind of talk about the uh, the gameplay or the episode today. Again, uh, four games uh, to be played here. I believe the first game is again Watford and then Barcelona again in the reverse fixtures. We have to beat them. Yes, they beat they did beat us 3-1 um, for our Champions League debut night. Again, not a good sight to see. But again, uh winning that game I believe would put us into still first place with 12 points on at, at top. So uh, we have to win uh, to qualify for the round of 16, and that is, you know, that would give us a good chance to, you know, keep on going in the, uh, you know, in, in the Champions League. But later on, uh, we still have two big games towards the end of the towards the end of the episode. We have Manchester United and also Chelsea as well. Again, we are kind of in a title race at the moment, sitting at top three with Chelsea on top with uh, Brighton at second and Manchester City at third. And, and I believe we are only three points away from each other. So, yeah, let's talk about the whole, you know, Saudi league that was, you know, you know that are doing the majority of the madness in the transfer market. So... Again, I think uh, I wasn't thinking about talking about it until I saw the news this morning. Um, well, Conte, Angola Conte, has moved to Saudi Arabia. Uh, CH has gone to Saudi Arabia, uh, Arabia as well. There are a lot more players. Benjamin Mendy, Koulibaly, um, Firmino. Even Firmino are you know going there as well. And, of course, the, the main one that kind of sparks the whole controversy of Saudi of or of having a Saudi league it's pretty much Ruben Neves again 26 year old at one point he was Arsenal a long-term target for a while but the problem is that you know uh, Arsenal just never had the funds to to get him I believe back then to sign him it cost more than 60 million for him and at one point I think it was uh second year or third year into uh, Arteta's uh, transfer transfer window, or even a lot of clubs are eyeing for him. But again, um, I heard about Wolves at the moment. It's having some sort of a you know financial issue. They need a big money sell, and there and that's that's what he gets right there. I mean, I forgot how much he signed for sixty million in the end from Saudi Arabia. But the fact that twenty six year old moving to a Saudi league. And he's still relatively young. I believe he was born in 1998. And the fact that, you know, a uh, 26-year-old... Well, actually, the math doesn't sit right with me. I think he's 1996. But the fact that you're 26-year-old heading into your prime. And, you know, when you're heading into your prime, you decided to, you know, go somewhere. You know, not European football. And that's a big fall off right there. I mean, the fact that if you're not quite playing in the European football when you're in your mid 20s or even in the middle of your prime that shows where you know you might not be a top top tier player not an elite player per se but Ruben Neves again very talented central uh, central midfielder for Wolves for the past few years a lot of top clubs were eyeing for him for the past few years as well and in the end, he decided to go to Saudi Arabia. Again, I think he get a big fat contract from them. But honestly, if you are going to Saudi Arabia and play, you are bound to get a big fat contract. And I heard there are at least $2 billion. I don't know the currency rate. I believe it was euros or pounds or, you know, I just call it dollars at the moment. But their two billion dollars are, you know, being injected into the um, into the Saudi league. And that's why they start to have these kinds of uh, these kind of movement, and it's tough, to be honest. Uh, as a football fan, right now, looks like money it's a big big deal uh, in the footballing world. Well, money has always been in the footballing world, but the fact that 
you know, luring players away from the top, top competition, Champions League, you know, Premier League, La Liga, those kinds of, you know, top leagues, to a Saudi league, eventually, you know, where is, you know, where are all the good players at at one point, right? I mean, Ru Ruben Aves set a, a very extreme case at the moment, 26 year old heading into your prime, going to Saudi league, well, when you have, you know, Angola Conte going there, you know, Firmino going there, like, those are fine because they're heading into 30s, they might have passed their peak, that's why they go, that's fine, that makes sense, right? But you are in your prime, you decide to go to Saudi League. And the fact that I heard about rumors reporting that despite Ruben Navas going to Saudi Arabia, I think it's, well, it's a done deal right now. And he is going to be being loaned back in the new ca uh, for Newcastle for two years. And that part just kind of, you know, sparks me even more, you know. When you are, when you go to Saudi that young, it's okay, but the fact that the whole transaction, the whole transfer is just going south right now. So, yeah, that's pretty much my rant for the Saudi League. I don't know how many more players are being lured away, you know, for money. I mean, good for them. I mean, I know it's, uh, I know a lot of them, they, you know, they needed money, you know, eventually it's the career it's the time to change it's their time to uh you know it's the chance to to choose and fair enough if, if that's what their intention to be but the fact that right now with the whole saudi arabia going on you earn a big fat paycheck but that's about it there's no prestige in playing european f football anymore you know you're 26 you want to be in you know you want to be in the top top competitions in your life and right now money just kind of throws it away and that's the problem with modern football right now everything it's all about money so that's pretty much my rant for uh for the champion well for for the saudi arabia league let's go back to the gameplay right here yes we did beat barcelona 3-2 after you know two nothing down in the first half and scoring three consecutive uh, consecutive goals in the second half, Skamaka with a last-minute winner as well. Again, we just can't get enough with the, these kinds of uh, last-minute wins, something that I have been trying to build upon. And later on, against Manchester United, back into the league game, Manchester United opened up the score right there, one nothing. but we have been struggling throughout the whole game. And Martinez has been trying to keep the score at... It is, but unfortunately, it was not good enough in general to... Uh, to fight off the monster like the fact that losing to Manchester United and they are not even a top eight at the moment we were at one point sitting at first uh Chelsea drawing the second game and right now this is going to be a uh, next biggest game that we have so far in the season is to play against uh the first place team Chelsea sitting at first 35 points so far they have been unbeaten but did drop points Two times, two draws for them before us. Uh, we lost two games so far, drawing uh, no games, but still, uh, you know, there's a big difference between losing a game and also drawing a game, and that's exactly what is going on for us at the moment. For Chelsea, again, this is going to be a very tough game. Again, we're at home. I know we are at home, but we have to win this game in order to surpass them, in order to go past them and overtake them once again into the first place. Again, our first place, uh, our first place position was kind of short-lived. Uh, I think it only lasts for a few days after they drop points and we beat Watford. And right here in the first half, Pulisic scoring the first goal right there. Unfortunately, uh, not a great way for us to uh, to start this game later on. Chelsea is just playing like a prime Barcelona, scoring the second goal 10 minutes before the end of the game. And we just couldn't really lay a finger on them. Unfortunately, we're looking for a lot of chances. But still, uh, the other team's goalkeeper is much better than, what, Emi Martinez for the past two games. But Emi Martinez did keep us, you know, intact throughout the whole game. And unfortunately, the loss against Chelsea means that we will be at second once again. But this time, five points away from Chelsea. 
And I realized Manchester City, it's kind of catching up. They're sitting at third right now, but we have a much better goal difference than them. And we're heading into December. Again, a very hectic December schedule, as you guys could see there. At least five games, six, seven games to play, including what? Including the league games, Champions League games to, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of close out the uh to kind of close out the december and also some uh some carapau cup games as well so yeah that's pretty much it thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed this video like this video subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in a bit